Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to SevTech Ages. So, since last episode, there was a stream yesterday, and we were working on a lot of that pathway stuff. Uh, you know, bringing the stairs up, and then bringing them up over there, and then up to there, and then up right there. And then I've also brought them up a little bit more over here. So, so it's definitely, that aspect of it's coming along. Um, but Damien actually dropped by... Uh, right before I went to sleep yesterday and he brought me a gift now normally I don't tend to accept too many gifts from like future ages and stuff like that or you know future progression things but this I was like okay I'll take this because honestly it saves me a lot of time because really all I'm doing to gather up castle bricks is I'm popping over to the twilight dimension and I'm just right clicking and collecting so it's really kind of a mundane process I mean I'm not even using any tool durability or anything like that. So he brought, he set up a, a thing for me. And you can see we've got a weirding gadget here with an ender chest. And it's connected up to hoppers. And what's happening is, look at this. Castle Bricks. And Dead Rock. And Dead Rock. And Castle Bricks. And Castle Bricks. And uh, this is Ferrocolite. And this is stuff, I believe he's just been manually mining. And he's just been giving me some extra because I'm going through so much of it. Um. But, yeah, like, look at that. It's, uh, it's a quarry that's running... Oh, magic beans. <laughs> it's a quarry that's running over in the Twilight Forest, and it's just collecting the stuff. So I will definitely take it, because I'm going through so much, so much castle brick for this. So it's definitely going to speed the whole process up, uh, especially when it comes to, like, streams and stuff. We get pretty much just build for the most part, minus, like, crag rock. That's, like, the only thing um, I'm having to go out and collect at the moment, so... But this undertaking is massive. It's a it's a huge undertaking, to say the least. So, whoop, there we go. Anyways, I've been prepping up some stuff and getting some stuff ready. And you can see I've actually crafted three of these containment chalices because um, they're a little bit expensive and they took a little while, um, mainly for the process. You know, because whenever you have those crafts that have the items that go on the, uh, the spectral relays, it does... It does take a little while for those to craft. So, actually, I need this spectral relay because I didn't craft another one. I just pulled the one off of here, and so I'd like to put it back, ideally. So, we'll just put that down right there. Um, and I had to make another telescope. Don't break this with a standard pick. Either use Silk Touch, or you could actually probably use... Uh, no, you can't use Carry-On for it. No. But Silk Touch, because when I broke it with a regular pick, like, it was gone. But yeah, I've been prepping, I've got the containment chalices made, and then I went ahead and crafted the stellar refraction table as well, because we're going to be using that. I don't know if we'll do the tree beacon today, I was debating, and I, I don't know if it's really, if we really need it right this second, because I'm honestly, I'm good on wood, and I, I mean, I think we'll be alright, so. But I will say, I'm dreading this, because I'm going to be crafting a lot of these for decor around the base, like a lot of them. Like a whole bunch of them. And, I mean, they're not terribly expensive. Like, if we pop over here, I've expanded the crystal setup by quite a bit. Um, you can see we've actually got crystals all down through here. Um, and what I've actually been doing, and this was brought up in the comments, and I didn't think about doing this, honestly. Um, if we break this off, break this off. Because normally I'm not, I don't do something like this for Stardust. Because it's not really necessary whenever you can just turn iron ore into star metal and then grind it down. It's not quite so necessary, but in this pack, it, it's quite useful um, to have a good crystal set up. So what I've been doing is... I'm actually going to hold on to that crystal, I think. It's 93% purity, which is not bad. I've been keeping only stuff that's 90%, so you can see I've got some right there. Um, I'll grab this one. But what we can do is we can actually drop these in here with the stardust, and we can just recycle those celestial crystals whoops or you can pick them up on accident like i did <laughs> again <laughs> i've got to get something set up for this but um i will probably whenever we get a chance like in you know in age three or something we're probably gonna see about just automating this whole process so it just constantly recycles the crystals but i don't know if we'll have the stuff to do that next episode or not um, I did notice that the prism isn't going to reach over here, so I'm going to have to change this setup a little bit. I'm going to do two prisms um, for each setup. But one thing that was brought up by Mr. Man on the Discord is... I didn't even think about it. I didn't even notice it in the last episode when we set this up because I just was like, okay, whatever. This thing is not emitting particles. Um, 
so it's not really collecting starlight and I've built everything I mean I've checked it double checked it triple checked it I mean everything's set up properly like the multi-block and everything but it's just not emitting particles so I'm almost thinking like for some reason this wall is interfering and I need to actually shift it back um, or something so I'm gonna have to end up moving this whole setup over but no biggie we'll get it sorted I mean they're still growing just fine and it's been more than enough for my needs as you can tell I've got a lot of crystals here and I actually just finished crafting up like star metal and stuff so um, but anyways today I want to get into the stellar refraction table and the containment chalices those are those the cost for a single one is not terrible but when you start adding this up um, it does take a little while so um, but anyways I've got a craft laid out in here and this is for the colored lens for growth um, I'm not gonna be using it for the growth aspect but let's go ahead and get this crafting. By the way, you can usually use a resonating wand. I've put my other wand in the chest over there. Um, and that was something we set up on the stream. Just moved it over from the house. And it's basically just for smelting up dead rock. And then also star metal. It's useful for that as well. Or not dead rock, but crag rock. So. But yeah, I've got... I went ahead and prepped most everything for this. Okay, we got two of the three. Um, I went ahead and prepped up most of this stuff, so that way we can kind of segue through the containment chalices and the stellar refraction table, and then start into abyssal craft today, which is going to be the last thing. Um, abyssal craft is going to be the last thing we do before we move into H3, which honestly I'm starting to really crave that H3. You know, I wanted to put it off for a while because, uh, for multiple reasons, really, and just kind of take our time through the pack, but. We're really getting close to starting Age 3, so I'm getting really excited because Age 3 is going to be the enchanting table, which, how much will we really use it? I don't know, but I still want it. I want a nice setup for it inside this castle. Uh, but then also drawer controller <laughs> It's going to be a major thing. Redstone is going to be a major thing. Um, lots and lots and lots of good stuff. Okay, so we got our colored lenses of growth, three of those, and the next thing that I want to make is this infused glass from Astral Sorcery. Um, so this is why I have all those resonating gems. And this, they ate through, like, it seemed like every single craft I did, it would eat through liquid starlight. There is a way to optimize that so it's more efficient. Um, and it's something I'm going to be working towards. Maybe have it set up by next episode. But these do require any kind of lens. Really, the only lenses, um, you could pull off the spectral at this age. You could pull off the push. Regeneration you can't do. Damage you can't do break you can't do and ignition you can't do so i went with growth because it's basically just a bunch of plants it's really really cheap um and then in addition we are going to need to get ourselves four stardust per craft okay let me go harvest up a little bit of that you go through stardust so much on here oh by the way nighttime is hitting i want to check i'm only missing one constellation right now and it is the one that only comes up like once every 36 days <laughs> So, I'm not going to hold my breath that I'm going to come across it, but... No, it's not up. Um, I did make the rest of our papers. So, you can see we have all these different constellations. This is the only one that I'm missing right now. And this one only comes up once every 36 Minecraft days. So, it's not terribly common. Um, I think Evorcio is the one I want, right? I got another really good purity. Um, purity of 95%. So I've been holding on to those. I mean, there is crystal duplication that I went over last episode, but it just depends. Sometimes I just level those up and use those separately. I ended up using the other crystals like last episode instead of duplicating just because I'm impatient a lot of times. So I'm just like, whatever, let's go. Okay, I got enough for one craft. Let's go ahead and do that because I've actually got some constellations in the sky tonight that I would like to make use of. So we'll go ahead and get our first bit of infused glass crafted up and let's see while that's crafting we've got that let's see i'm trying to remember what all the enchants are you can check it in here that's underwater breathing okay there's our infused glass uh let's see that one is silk touch boots is and then we've got lucerna which is night vision um yeah, let's do night vision, actually. I do want night vision. That would be super handy to have. Um, so we'll set up our stellar... Let me actually move this. I don't want it sitting there. We'll set up our stellar refraction table, like right here. And then what we're going to do is, if we open this up... Let me put in 
some infused glass and let me put in a piece of parchment and if we open this up you can see we have right here these are the constellations that are in the sky right now um, so we're going to go for night vision now you can actually stack different um, constellations together I'm gonna be doing just Lucerna I think um, yeah I just want to make a, a maybe a night vision uh, you don't have to stack these on top of each other by the way so we have an engraved glass that's how that works basically and you can see it's engraved with Lucerna so what we're going to do then is oops, shift right click our infused glass out and then let's go ahead let me try to get another one done and I would like to get I'm, I went ahead and made three of these one of them that I have to have this episode is mending got to get mending but I am going to check over in the hunting dimension because it's possible that we might be able to get mending over there. So I don't know what all constellations are like actually up in the sky because they don't seem to rotate at all. So we'll find out here in a minute. Now there is a chance that your parchment will burn up. Um, that is a possibility. Uh, usually it means that the constellations that you're trying to put in there just really don't work well together. Four, let me break one more of these off. And we'll be able to get our other infused glass. So if your parchment burns up, I mean, you can always try it again because it, it's possible that it will work, um, you know, the second time. I mean, there's a lot of things that happen in the course of doing enchanting with Astral Sorcery. So, but these engraved glass, that's what you want. And what's the other one that we want to do? Do we want to do Silk Touch? I mean, I've got, I've got plenty of Silk Touch picks, so I don't know that that's what I want. Moon's still up high. Um, our Mara is always up in the hunting dimension. That's the one that does protection. Uh, Evorcia, right? That was a pretty good one, right? Um, yeah, that one's heist. Or efficiency, I mean. So, do we want to get that? Efficiency would be kind of nice to be able to put on picks. But also, like, something like fortune would be good. No, actually, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grab any of that. I don't really want heist. And, well, I tell you what, though, I can, well, no, I'm going to wait till I go to the hunting dimension, I think. I'll tell you what, we're going to do our Mara, this one right here. So we'll just stack that up, and, okay, you can see the parchment just burnt up. Um, and whenever you stack it, it's just, it's basically more effective. Oh, the parchment keeps burning. Okay, well, we'll try on the hunting dimension, that's fine. Parchment's easy enough to craft, so I've actually got the stuff on me here for that. But like I said, I mean, you can mix the effects if you so desire. I'm not mixing them because I'd rather have, like, you know, if I have, uh, you know, like this. If I want if I want to make night vision, I just want night vision. I don't want a bunch of stuff added on because it's, it's kind of like, I don't know for sure that I'm going to want that on every situation that I'm going to be using that. So I'm going to try for more pure books. Now, there is a chance you will sometimes get byproducts, and we'll go over how the actual enchanting process works right now, actually pop over here and I can't remember what's the uh, actually I'll tell you what I might have one let me look though what's the constellation that handles like unbreaking okay mineralis is the one that handles uh, fortune there actually might not be an unbreaking one Just let me see I think yeah see I've got some unbreaking books so I might actually end up using these because you can put unbreaking on the glass and it'll last longer Okay, I grabbed some books. Let's pop over to the hunting dimension really, really quick um, to see what kind of stuff is up in the sky there. Because I am quite curious. But eventually I would like to get, you know, all these different enchanting plates. And then I will say in age three, I believe it is, that we get access to the printing press and the typesetting table. So then we'll be able to duplicate the books we make from this. And then there we go. <laughs> We're all set. So, but I will say this is cheaper because you don't really use any XP. You can actually enchant without using any XP at all if you so desire. All right, so we'll put down our refraction table right here and put our sword into it on accident, of course. That. Okay, we have access to Decidia, Boots, Armara, Lucerna, Octans, and uh, Pelatrio. All right, so I want Armara is what my goal is at the moment. 
and there we go it went through so we have an engraved glass with armara and that one is the one that governs protection so what we can do is we can actually take um let's take the armara book or the armara glass first and then what we can do is we can take and put a book into this and we're going to see some little particle effects and like color shooting into this thing i love watching the astro sorcery stuff run it's a little bit op but i love to watch it run so much and now you can see that we have an enchanted book here now it's not always going to be the same thing it all depends um, but you can see we got protection five on that book awesome um, it is going to be stronger if like the constellations in the sky and if it's nighttime stuff like that it tends to come out better but even still there can be some fluctuation hunting dimension is like a solid this is what it is 24 7 all the time it's always nighttime um, so it's you know it's kind of a good place to go but really at this point i have protection five infinite um in chance now the one that i'm really after right now is what is it, avatos yes i want avatos is what i'm after at the moment but we don't have oops we don't have avatos here do we um it should come up in the overworld that's going to be mending so we can just make infinite mending books which will be great um, but then let's say let's put in another book here let's pop that into there and we'll get that running because I would like to get protection on our mantle of stars protection five as well as on our legs and headpiece we're going to be upgrading armor today um, quite a bit so there we go we got protection five again now there is a small chance that you can get added effects as well so let's see how's our oops I love this like screen it's all so like it's so cool i love it okay so we got protection five four of those now you can also enchant the stuff directly and just put it straight onto there so for example i could just put the mantle of stars into there and it's going to put protection five onto that and the mantle of stars is extremely enchantable it is extremely extremely enchantable so you can have tons of stuff on there so we have protection five on our mantle of stars now awesome um, now, I'm going to go ahead and pull that plate out, because we don't want that. And let's go get some new armor. It's time that we upgrade armor, because we've been wearing this stuff for far too long, and I'm tired of it. And I'm going to grab our refraction table as well, because I am still wanting to get Avatos on this last plate, because I want mending on everything. <laughs> I just want everything all mending out. Oh, I actually got a Celestial Crystal with 100% purity. It's pretty good stats on that thing. I'm going to hold on to that. In fact, like there's like a one, I think the chance, I was I was recently reviewing it, but the chance on that is one out of 60 that you'll get one. That's the first one I've had that's got 100% durability, or uh, purity, I mean. But yeah, stacking, stacking like three, like how I did three Armaras, it's going to boost the, basically the power of it. It's going to boost the effect of it. So it is worth doing, um, you know, especially if you want to just be able to like pop out like protection books like that and stuff. Okay, so for let's start with our headpiece. Okay, our headpiece. I'm going to go with the Yeti helmet. I do believe. Uh, I'd say it's about the best that we've got. Plus, it chills attackers, which is kind of nice. Um, and I think it comes. Yeah, it comes standard with protection too. We're just gonna have to upgrade that. It's, you know, not really a whole lot of use in protection two for us but that's fine so we'll go ahead and grab that and then let's pop over and let's throw it on our headpiece i'm actually in some ways i'm happy to be saying goodbye to valonite like the stuff was i love the valonite stuff granted don't get me wrong but it's we've been wearing it for a while we've been wearing it for quite a while so four levels and we'll just throw protection uh protection four maybe i can't put protection five on there <laughs> I'm starting to think that I cannot, but protection four is just as good. That's fine. That'll be all right. We're going to be a little bit OP. I'm going to pop up here real quick. Okay. Nothing exciting in the sky. I think Lucerna is probably still out. Um, so what we're going to do, let's put this into there. And let's put, yeah, Lucerna is still in the sky. So I'm going to wait till it gets a little bit darker um, before I jump on that, though. We also have Dissidia. Okay, and I think on our legs, I want to get fiery legs, um, which is fiery tears or blood combined with iron. Don't want to pop over there for that right now. 
yeah, I should be back by the time the moon... I'm waiting for the moon to get, like, right above us. I don't think it's going to have too much impact with, like, night vision, but let's see. Okay, I'd say the moon's at a pretty good spot right now. So, I'm going to drop a book in there and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with the Lucerna. And like I said, there is a chance you can get some extra stuff on here. Um, it just all depends. So, we got night vision book. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw our Yeti helmet. Um, oh, I can't because it's already enchanted. Oops. That's fine. I'll make um, I'll make one extra book of that, and then I'm probably just going to pull the plate out. Um, because that's going to give me an extra one. I only need one night vision book. And then I can always make more, you know, later, later on. Okay, so there we go. A couple of those. And you don't technically have to do this at night, like I'm doing. You don't necessarily have to do that. From what I recall, it kind of helps, though, if your constellation's, like, in the sky and everything. Uh, if you do that. Okay, so let's get our legs crafted. And there's our fiery ingots. Fiery legs. And then, let's see. How many levels do I need for that? Four levels. Okay, so there's protection four on this. I guess it won't it won't give the protection five so protection four will be fine though on these pieces and then which technically i could wear the mantle and then no other armor oh okay curse bugged out for a minute so it kicked me um but anyways we're gonna put protection on our legs and then on our head piece i want to put night vision on this so five levels for that that'll be fine night vision is gonna be so useful like, we're going to start getting some really good enchants. Like, it's going to take a little while because i got to wait for, you know, constellations to come out and stuff like that. But uh, it is going to be quite handy. Okay, so we have night vision and protection on our headpiece and protection on our legs. Let's go ahead and switch these out, actually. So this is what we look like at the moment. <laughs> like a Yeti man. Um, now, the other thing I would like to do is I would like to go out and find, um, in between waiting for, like, nighttime to hit, basically. Oops. Yeah, that's about to happen. Um, oh, by the way, I meant to show you in our perk tree. Um, that's the only thing I have left to get. No armor is more armor. Um, but right now, we're going to be burning attackers and chilling attackers at the same time. So it's going to be quite useful. But what I want to do is I want to go out and get some dog pelts. Because we don't really need the slime boots anymore. I mean, I like the slime boots. Uh, for general purpose, but now we don't really need them because, I mean, we're not using the longsword anymore. So these right here, wild dog pelts, and I think I've only got the one. I'm pretty sure I only have the one wild dog pelt. So let's, uh, let's pop over here. I want to see if I have any swords with looting from back when we did Twilight Forest. Uh, yeah, right here. Looting three and mending on this ironwood sword. I'm going to hold on to that, actually. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to put it in my uh, my bag of tools. Um, because I'm actually getting rid of some of the astral sorcery stuff because it's kind of going up into the astral sorcery area somewhat. I've got to set up like some nice little cabinets and stuff like that. But wild dogs tend to spawn a lot around the desert. So if we just kind of like fly around out here, um, we're liable to find one of these. Okay, I did find one right here. Right over near the base, actually. I was flying back from across the ocean. And, of course, I don't get a pelt. These drops are terrible. Like, I need, like, a bunch of these guys. Because even with looting three, I can get a single one. So I'm going to fly around. I need four of these things. Because I would like to make the wild dog pelt boots. The defense on those, it's not terrible. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. But they have some added effects. Um, so now that we're getting rid of the slime boots, I would like to get those. So I'll be back once I manage to find four of these things. Okay, I flew around forever. Um, it's close to an hour, and I have still just one wild dog pelt. I killed close to 20 of them with looting three. I don't know if looting three just doesn't really affect it. Um, Pain of Arthropods 5, look out. Um, I don't know if it just doesn't affect it really, or if the drop rate is just... I know the drop rate is abysmal on the wild dog pelts. I was thinking looting three would make it a little bit more bearable, but like I said, I mean, I killed like 20 dogs and not a single pelt. So either RNG really hates me or it just, it's just such a bad drop rate. Um, also, Sphere dropped by 
And he was needing, he didn't have like mending books and protection books, night vision books. So I, I gave him all those and he actually gave me a magnet. And this magnet's not until age four, but I don't mind using it since the blood magic sigil doesn't work. Um, so I can activate it and drop stuff. Uh, it's actually a really cheap item, um, like super, super cheap. But it's not until age four, but he traded it to me for... Uh, for books so I did get um, right here is pull this off um, it's Avatos in grave glass and I went ahead and put on breaking two because that's mending and you know I'm gonna use a lot of it I'm sure so look right here this is all mending three books now Callahad brought up a good point and I didn't think about this before um, which really I only lost out of one piece if you enchant the items that's how you get the max stat the, like I got the protection five on the mantle of stars. That's because I actually threw it into the table and enchanted it there. But if I do the books, I don't get the max level. So that's why I only got protection four on the legs and head. Now, granted, our headpiece we wouldn't have been able to enchant the table because it already had protection two, um, unless we disenchanted it and then enchanted it. Um, but I did lose out on protection five on the legs. I could make another payer. It's not really a problem. I've got plenty of fiery blood, but I'm not going to worry about it because honestly, it's going to be more than enough. So I'm not too concerned about it. I am going to keep trying to farm those those pelts, but it's not something that I can promise it's going to be, you know, anytime soon because the drop rate is just horrible on that. So, but I didn't have a glass. I wanted to actually get this on an enchant because it only comes up once every 36 days, 36 Minecraft days. But Horal Horalogem came up and I did manage to get that in the telescope. So we have all the constellations researched now. Um, but you can see this one if we get it on an enchant. Uh, harvesting things with tools that were even just briefly exposed this constellation's light yield far more resources than usual. So, um, but that's fine, that's okay. So anyways, we got our mending book. So let's pop down and we're gonna stick mending on our stuff. All of our stuff including our pick i want mending on our pick <laughs> um or actually do i want to put it on the maze breaker because i know that came up let's actually try the maze well let's go ahead and put enchant let's actually pop over and grab the maze breaker i want to test it with the castle blocks because i'm not actually for sure um i know it came up on the during the stream yesterday and i didn't want to start using the maze breaker until i got it enchanted so let's actually try this thing out let's uh I want to see if it breaks castle bricks instantly. Because, I mean, the mining speed is 8 on that. It's on par, technically, with the mining speed on the swift pick. Oh, wow. That's worse. That is worse than the swift pick. So, honestly, putting, like, efficiency, I think, on the swift pick would probably be our best bet. Um, Maze Breaker is a no-go. Which is sad, because I was really hoping that would work. So, yeah, swift pick is the best possible pick at this point. Um, now, granted, you do have, like, the rock picks from Astro Sorcery, which can be unbreakable. Um, for whatever reason, this pack, they don't degrade. So, you could use that, but Swift Pick is a lot faster. So, I'm going to get out uh, four, yeah, four of these. And let's grab our armor, and let me grab this. Okay, we're going to put Mending on everything. So, five levels for this. And it's going to come out to just be standard mending, but honestly, it doesn't really matter because standard mending is fine. I mean, mending three would be nice, I guess. Um, I think it makes it so it, it mends a lot more per XP. Um, but this will be fine. Two levels for that. Okay. I will take it. The mantle, though, that mantle can accept like a ton of enchants, though. Um, and then if we want to put this on our pick, it's only two levels. And then we could put, like, efficiency and stuff. So, honestly, I think once we get all of that on there, um, I think if we just make a really good swift pick like that, I think it's going to mine Castle Rock at a decent speed. So, I've just got to get, I've got to get efficiency. So, which there is an, there is an enchant book for that, or a Astral Sorcery enchant. I think the... The only one that really comes to mind is, like, Unbreaking. I don't think there's a constellation that does Unbreaking. Uh, which kind of makes sense, because then you could just put in Unbreaking on all your other things. 
Um, now, one other thing that I want to do here is I need to get green gems. And I've been doing bad about my nutrition. Because I died on the stream. Um, Anti-fluid, again. Like, that's like the bane of my existence at this point. But I died on the stream, and I just haven't went and made more hearty stew because I ran out. <laughs> I need to do that, but I haven't yet. So, um, but anyways, all this stuff, we're going to go ahead and put green gems onto this. So, we'll have that. Okay, now we are all set. So, we've got, I mean, I'm still going to add some more enchants, but we've got protection 4, night vision, and mending. Protection 5, and mending. Protection 4, mending. And then we also burn and chill attackers. I think that'll be pretty good. And then if we stick, I want to stick, like, maybe unbreaking on this pick. But anyways, the next thing that I want to do is I want to get into the chalices. And we're going to go over those, and um, actually, I only want... I'm just going to grab two buckets for right now. Two buckets of lava, two buckets of water, two buckets of liquid starlight is my shopping list here. And if you've never seen the containment chalices, they are probably one of the coolest blocks, especially for decor. And like in the castle, with like the theme of the castle and everything, it's going to be a perfect fit. Okay, so what we can do is, if we place these chalices down, I'm going to put, um, let's see, that's four wide. Let's see, we're going to put a containment chalice right there, we'll put one right there, and we'll put one right there, let's say. Okay, so these containment chalices, the way they work is if we were to put in, say, liquid starlight into this. And let's put another thing. These things actually hold 24 buckets, and this little... This little circle here is a visual representation of how much liquid is in there. So there's really not much in there um, at the moment. But these things actually get pretty big, and they're like swirling orbs of, like, liquid. Uh, we'll have to fill one up here in just a minute. But And then let's put lava into this one. And then in this one, let's put water. Okay, you'll notice I'm already starting to get stuff. But there we go. And you'll notice it's going to start making things. And I'm using all three of these. You can actually use this for the sand trick. You notice it's just dumping stuff all over the place. Um, I'm going to have to put like a collection system here. But basically what's going to happen is... But basically what's going to happen is these fluids that are within these containment chalices are going to interact with one another and they're going to create things. So we can make sand, we can make cobblestone, smooth stone, ice. You can see all this stuff is being made here. And there's some obsidian, which we can't even use yet. Um, now if I was to just make... If I was to set up just two containment chalices, one had water and one had lava, then it's going to produce just cobblestone, smooth stone, and obsidian. If I do just um, lava and liquid starlight, it's going to produce just sand and then possibly aquamarine. Um, I'm thinking this is going to produce some really good stuff here in a minute. But then if we had, say, water and liquid starlight, then it's just going to produce ice. So it is consuming a very minute amount of these liquids every time it runs, every time it makes something. Um, but you'll notice, I mean, it's kicking it's kicking out materials at a decent rate. So a lot of sand and cobblestone stuff. Of course, we will have to add, you know, more and more liquid to this to keep it running. So before when I was messing with that astral sorcery, I mean, normally if these liquids collide in world, they're going to do this, you know, what's happening here. Um, and of course, water and lava, depending on how they collide, they're going to make cobblestone, smooth stone, or obsidian. But in this case, they just make all three, and there's like a chance. You'll notice I'm not getting nearly as much smooth stone as I am cobblestone, and not nearly as much obsidian as I am smooth stone. Um, so it kind of works its way through that. Now there is, by default, there's normally a chance that liquid starlight and lava will produce um, aquamarine. And unless it's changed, the, cont the containment chalices can do that as well. Now, in addition, if you have all three of these running, you can actually get rock crystal and random ores. The chance isn't super high, but it can happen. Um, now, I don't know if it's if it's switched in this pack. I mean, that's something I'm just going to have to let it run for a while because it's not... I mean, you can see I've only gotten one piece of obsidian. And the ores and stuff are a little bit more uncommon than obsidian is. But regardless, it gives us a really easy way to collect um, these materials here. So, and it makes a lot of them. I'm going to let these two buckets run out, and we're going to see exactly what all we get from this. Now, we could automate this, and we will be automating this in the next age. I kind of just wanted to show it to you today. Um, and it's something I can set it up and let it run and collect all the stuff. You know, I'm not going to let it just sit there and run uh, without me. 
But I don't want to automate this just yet because I... We don't have a whole lot of really good liquid control type stuff at the moment. Because I am going to want to have... I'm going to need to automate liquid starlight. You know, I'm going to need to have lava. All that stuff available. Wow, there was two obsidian like back to back right there. Um, but then in addition, I don't have access to like drawer controllers. So I don't have a good way. I mean, I could feed it all into drawers. But I don't even know... Do we have void upgrades at the moment? No, and I guess that makes sense because we don't, we're not supposed to have obsidian yet. We're actually getting a decent amount of obsidian out of this. Um, but I'm going to let this run for a minute and we're going to see exactly how much of all this stuff that we end up getting out of this. Now, if you don't have other liquids next to this, it's not going to waste the liquid. These things actually are, are basically Astro Sorcery's solution to like denser liquid storage because each one of these can hold it's either 24 or 26 buckets of liquid and oh yeah look at that aquamarine haha -ha. so it is possible to get aquamarine shell from this and we could smelt it and get three aquamarine awesome and i think we could actually just harvest from it too so but i'm gonna let this thing run out and then we'll be back uh once it's done okay it finally stopped running um, it took a while. I ended up, I will say, I ended up throwing one more bucket of starlight into this. Because it uses up the starlight a little bit faster than it uses the water and lava. The water and lava, two buckets lasted forever. So the total output um, that I got here is from two buckets of water, two buckets of lava, and a bucket of starlight. Um, so all of this stuff. 33 obsidian. We got four aquamarine shale. So that is dropping... And uh, there's cobblestone, smooth stone. I didn't get any ores. That's not to say that they're disabled. Because I know even by default, the rock crystals and the ores are fairly uncommon. So it's something that we might see as we run it more um, and as we automate it. Now, I got to thinking that this aquamarine shale, um, you know, the, the aquamarine that's in the beneath is immune to fortune. You can't uh, use fortune on it. But this, you can smelt it for three. And you could probably fortune it for more. Um, but honestly, I mean, three outputs not that bad in like an automated system. So I'm honestly thinking that once we hit H3, if we were to automate this and stick it in, you know, stick it in the hunting dimension, let's say. Um, or the, you know, at least the starlight creation. Um, yeah, probably the whole thing. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But if we were to automate this and stick it in the hunting dimension... And process the aquamarine, and we had our light whales set up, you know, in the astral field, and then we connected them up to really good collector crystal multi blocks. And with it, you know, always being nighttime and everything, that's going to make it really efficient. And since I got four ore for a single bucket, honestly, I bet that could create all the liquid starlight that we need to run it in addition to excess liquid starlight. I'm betting. So. We might look into that and make some big automation setup for our cobble gen once we hit, you know, H3. Because H3, we're going to have a little bit better tools for automating that, I feel like. But, yeah. I mean, that's that's a really good output for that small amount of stuff. Because you think one bucket of water, one bucket of lava makes, you know, obsidian. And so, uh, that's, that's not too bad. I'll take it. Um, I'm going to go dump this stuff off, though, at the storage building. And like I said, I mean, you can you can mix it, match it, and just set up whatever you want. But if you do, like, all three together, that's when you're going to get the most output. But honestly, I mean, if you just want obsidian, just water and lava, and there you go. I'll tell you what, it really helped us on, like, ice. Or not ice, but sand. And um, we actually got quite a bit of sand. Not too worried about the ice, but... And I'm just going to put away the obsidian in the shell for right now, because um, I don't have a hopper on hand to stick the obsidian in a drawer. And I haven't decided exactly... What I want to do yet with the shale. So, um, but let's actually, I don't know why I'm bouncing. Don't ask me. I have no clue. But anyways, let's take a look and see what the containment chalice looks like when it's filled. Just so I can show it to you guys. Because it is, it's really, really cool. Okay, just so I can show it to you guys. I want, to, I want you to see the containment chalice when it's filled. Um, because it is really, really cool. But anyways, it holds like 20 some odd buckets. And you'll notice like before it kind of looked like just a chisel and bit bit. And now you'll notice it got a little bit bigger. And it actually gets pretty decent size. And that's why I want to use it for decor, because it's going to display whatever liquid we put in there. So we could have, like, you know, these containment chalices set up around the building, you know, with different liquids and stuff in them. And they just make a, a really, really cool 
decorative piece. So look at that. I mean, it's getting it's getting decent sized here. And it's a way to add movement. I think adding movement in any kind of build is like, it's paramount, I feel like. Anytime that you can add something that adds some kind of movement, you know. But that's how big it gets. It gets to be, you know, a regular Minecraft block size. And then it kind of rotates, and then all these, like, particles kind of float around it. And, yeah. But if you do set these up for decor, just make sure you don't put ones that can actually interact. Like, you can put water and water next to each other, and that's fine. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna do anything but um, they do not retain their inventory by the way whenever they're picked up so just a heads up you can't use them for that but they are really good item uh, liquid storage especially in h2 for like good dense liquid storage 24 24 or 26 blocks in a single block space well actually I guess it's, technically it's two block spaces but um, it's still really really good very very good and you know I guess technically we could always use the necromantic prime for gathering up liquids. I don't know. Um, I think that's the main things I wanted to cover in Astro Sorcery for right now. Um, I would like to do rituals, but it was brought up in the Discord that the rituals in this pack are actually bugged, and they actually shut off um, constantly. So you have to break them and restart them um, pretty much any time you log off. Um, and I think in some cases, just if not... I don't even know that chunk loading has, you know, fixes it. So I'm not going to rely on the rituals too much, maybe until they're fixed. I'm hoping that maybe the next version fixes them or something like that. So, but I mean, I think that's the main things. Um, I will tell you the tree beacon is also really OP. If I wasn't so late into age two and like about to hit age three, I'd probably set one up because it's really OP tree farm. Like we're talking one sapling um, feels like double chests with stuff. Like, it's massive. Um, it really, really is. Like, you put down one sapling and you can get, like, stacks and stacks and stacks of, like, wood and apples and saplings and all that stuff um, as the tree kind of decays. So it makes your saplings go really far. Um, it would be good for, like, rare-type saplings, in truth, because you're going to, like, get way more than what you put in there. Um, but anyways, yeah, I think, I think we'll do more Astral Sorcery in the next age, but I think that's it for this age, um, which we did get quite a bit done. And we got mending and all kinds of good things. So, um, But anyways, now I want to switch over our attention to Abyssal Craft. Um, and I want to start working on that this episode. At least get our key crafted is the major thing. And then we might pop into the first dimension. Um, but you can see right here, Slimy Bones, that's not a problem. Corellium Pearls, not a problem. Oblivion Catalyst, really not a problem. We got some Prismarine Ender Pearl. Uh, Shard of Oblivion, which is Shadow Gems around Transmutation Core. Um, and we actually have a transmutation core. That's not going to be on me. It's over in here. Let me go grab it real quick. Okay, so that craft right there. We can do that. It's going to take one durability off that transmutation gem. So I just need to craft three more. I am pretty low on shadow gems, so I am going to have to go farm those. I can either go to the Darklands biome, or I could... I could use the PE that's in the Necronomicon. And get shadow beasts to spawn that way. Usually I get about four or five shadow gems... Anytime those shadow beasts spawn, and they actually kill them, they actually just die. They die off after a little while, and the shadow gems are left on the ground. So I could do it either way. So, what, yeah, what I'm probably actually going to do is just... Oh, well, this thing, this thing does retain its inventory, doesn't it? Okay, well, I'll tell you what I can do. I've got my interdimensional cage, and I can just charge that up. And then I can place and, and re-grab the quest ram because he takes like 480 PE so two times and it pretty much drains that off like all the PE that's in there and so that should be able to spawn a shadow beast so I'm going to try to get some more shadow gems built up and then honestly once we get that done um, I mean we're pretty well set because the rest of this is all really really easy I may have to go get a little bit more prismarine but that's not a problem so I'll be back here in a bit once I have the shadow gems that I need Okay, it's been a little bit since I cut, and I went and farmed Shadow Gems, and then I had to go back just now and farm more Shadow Gems, because I realized that I didn't have as many as I actually needed for everything that I wanted to take with me. And then I also went and farmed Wild Dogs, and it took about 40 kills, but I managed to get three more Wild Dog Pelts. And funny story, I actually had more luck getting those to drop without looting, without my looting sword, just using the Prismarine Longsword. So I don't know, it was, may have just been my RNG, but, you know, just a funny, a funny little thing there. Um, but, 
it dawned on me, you know, something I've never actually done with Astro Sorcery, because I'm, if I have the ability to enchant via books, I like to enchant via books. Um, so I actually haven't, I've never, I got to thinking, you, it may not, I don't know, it may not even matter. You guys let me know down in the comments, because you guys might know, it's something I've just, I don't guess I've ever done is if you put three different constellations, I don't know if they're full strength. I'll have to play around with that. Because technically, oh, I got the hemp fibers back, okay. You could probably put like, maybe if that does, if it is full strength um, doing that, then you could actually put like three full strength enchantments on a single piece. And then really like, for example, I imagine the fiery legs, like if we put like three, piece, three enchants on there, they're like full strength. And put three different enchants or two different enchants or something on another one that's full strength. And we put them together, we could probably have like a really strong set of legs. I'm not actually that worried about it because I just don't have the plates to make that a thing. I think I'd rather have the books. I'm not too worried about an extra one protection rank, but I don't know. Just something I was thinking about. So um, I might be wrong on that. I remember when it first came out... I remember that's that's what I was thinking, but it, it may not be that way. So, uh, not a hundred percent sure. Oh yeah, I need more shadow gems. Well, let's go ahead and put this and that on there. I'm still really happy with the enchants that we've got on there. I'm not that worried about it, but um, I could be slightly off. Okay, wild dog pelt boots and protection five, four levels. Mending three levels that worked out perfect and we got wild dog pelt boots with good stuff on it By the way, I did get a diamond chest plate off of a zombie a random zombie um, But of course it's not gonna replace our mantle So the wild dog pelt boots basically when we're wearing these like watch this Shoo we get speed when we're wearing these we also jump higher and in addition we take no fall damage. So we don't get the bounce effect, which is actually kind of ideal, I think, at this point. Now that we have like a flight um, and climbing and all that stuff, I don't think we really need bounce. Because it, we're getting to the point now where I think bounce is more of a nuisance than it is a help. So I just as well kind of get rid of that. And this extra jump height and stuff is really, really nice. And the speed uh, increase is nice. Like all this stuff is just it's awesome. Um, once I make up some more plates, I will play around with it and see if maybe we can enchant like full strength and stuff like that Because I'm actually I'm actually not sure I tend to always enchant with books with something like that. So I just I don't think I've ever even tried it So I don't know um, Where did my transmutation? Okay, so let's go ahead and get one more shot of oblivion. I actually want five of these not just four of them Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do, and I know we're getting fairly close to wrapping up point, I want to pop into the dimension and get the farming stuff underway. Let's see, for our gateway key for the Oblivion Catalyst, for Prismarine, and Ender Pearl. Okay. Got all this stuff prepped up, so. Um, and by the way, I was I was working on farming Shadow Gems here, but then instead I ended up just... Uh, whoops. I ended up just going to the Darklands biome because with looting, I was getting... Um, Oh, that's right. Sacrifice. Whoops. I almost forgot I need a sacrifice. Okay, so let's go get ourselves an animal to sacrifice. Okay, we'll put him right there. Anyways, it's gonna eat the pig. And... Then it's gonna start draining the Necronomicon. And there we go. We got our Oblivion Catalyst. I'm gonna put this on here so it can go ahead and start charging. Um, and so now what we can do is we can craft our gateway key. So let's get that. And then I also want to go ahead and get our staff of rending because we're going to have to have it. I'm not excited about it. Um, oh yeah, I've got, I need four shadow gem shards and our staff of rending because we are going to have to get this to upgrade our Necronomicon, which is kind of important. Okay, so now we're all set. Um, I will say, I mean, there's some items that, you know, if you're going in there for the long haul, you'll want to take with you, like um, these right here. 
Um, you know, the stuff to craft these, but I'm not going to worry about it. Well, actually, you know what? I can't. Technically, we could still, I think, clear the dimension. Let me see. What does it take to actually make this key? Yeah, I mean, that's standard right there. I mean, technically, we could pull it off, but the thing is, I'm not going to be able to find the dungeon with this. But thing, I think um, if we use the spawner seeker, oh, but that has nether wart. See, technically, we could go, I think, I think we could go to the next dimension. Because everything for that is craftable and obtainable, but I don't know. It's going to be hard to find a dungeon without, without that. I don't know. But anyways, let's go ahead. We're going to set this portal up, like, right here. And I am going to have some of these down in the abyssal area uh, once we get to that. But And I will probably end up shifting this down to the ground as well, so we don't have to step up into it. Um, but anyways, we're going to pop into the first dimension and at least get our feet wet here and maybe look for treasure because I think the structures probably still spawn with the treasure in them. Okay, we got mobs right here. Um, let me go ahead and first up, I'm going to mark this as home. Oh, we got, we got structures right here. Great. Okay, so inside of these we have treasure. Oh, we don't have treasure. Never mind. We do not in fact have treasure. If we pop down here bread not quite not quite what i was uh, hoping for and it seems like my speed is not oh you know what i'm hungry that's why there we go now we got speed again yeah okay the treasure in these strongholds is disabled oh no wait there's corellium pearls and abyssal knight legs and more bread so it seems like the chests at the bottom are still there Unless maybe somebody flew over, because it looks like maybe somebody dug into the side of that. Um, but the Staff of Rending. Okay, let's... Let me pop up here real quick. What we're wanting to make next, and this is where the grind of Abyssal Craft kind of starts up, is we need to make the Tier 2 Necronomicon. And it's actually fairly... This one right here, it's actually fairly easy to craft, but it requires 8 of these skin of the Abyssal Wastelands, which require Corellium Plague Flesh, which drops from pretty much anything... <laughs> So, um, what we're going to need to do, I'm trying to show you something here. Um, it also takes these Abyssal Wasteland Essences, which you can only get from the Staff of Rending. It talks about it right here. But what we're going to do is we're going to have to right-click these mobs. And you can hold right-click. Um, but it does take a little while because with the Tier 1, each time you right-click a mob and do damage, it gives it one point, basically. And you can see right there, Abyssal Wasteland Energy, 19 out of 100. So I have to right-click and deal damage 100 times with this rank 1 one um, in order to make one of those Abyssal Wasteland Energies. And it really, I believe it only, if I recall correctly, um, I believe it only works from, yeah, see, I can't right-click that zombie. It has to be like Depth Schools, Abyssal Zombies, basically mobs that are native to this area. By the way, don't step in that blue liquid. It's not good. Not as bad as antimatter, but it's still not great. Okay, I'm at 80 out of 100 right now. Okay, I should have a energy by now, I should think. Yeah, so I've got my first Abyssal Wasteland energy, and I've got 59 out of 100 to the next one. Really doesn't take that long. Um, it's not a very exciting or fun grind or anything. But in truth, it only takes, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes or something um, to get the uh, the energy that you need. I kind of want to check these out because... Um, Abyssal Knight Pick. That's Cobalt level mining right there. Which really isn't bad. And getting the free Corellium Pearls, I'll definitely take that. The worst thing is I'm not going to be able to find a Stronghold Seeker. <laughs> Until I have blaze powder. And that's going to make it a little bit tricky to find this. Because. There's not really any other indicator. Because it's underground like a stronghold. But yeah we've pretty much like totally. I need to put green gem on that. I'll do that. Um, just between episodes. But I mean we've pretty much revamped all of our armor today. Which is awesome. Right now I just kind of want to run around. And like look for those little like buildings. Oh we can get abyssal knight ingots. I'm pretty sure those top chests just don't spawn with anything. But all these ones down here seem to spawn just fine. So I don't know if they were like overlooked or or what. 
I'm not for sure. Because the, the chest on the bottom is generally the better one. And you can find, like, transmutation gems and stuff in those. So, I mean, they're actually kind of useful. Um, I don't think you can find those, like, spawner seekers, though. Oh, and Shogoths. There's a lot of Shogoths around here. Um, so if you're in need of Shogoths, like, they spawn quite a bit. Wow, look at that. This dimension is filled with mobs, usually. I'm gonna pop back through, in fact. Um, but I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode. I've gotten two essences, I think it is, so far. Yeah, I've gotten two of those. So I'm gonna keep grinding those up, and so that way next episode we can pop in. We'll have the Necronomicon rank two. Yeah, right here, these Power Stone trackers. That's what I need. But... Oh, wait, never mind. Sorry, we can do it that way. Starlight Infusion. Ender Pearls. Starlight Infusion. And then that makes uh, Eye of Ender. Okay, I'm derping. I'm not looking through any eye like I'm supposed to. And then we can make Power Stone trackers. So we'll get we'll do that next episode, and then we'll go find the Power Stone and take on the boss. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just... I'm totally derping. So... Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I'm going to get some things prepped for the next episode, and then we'll get that underway. So, I may go ahead and actually move right into that after this episode. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments about if you've enchanted. I, I mean, I can test it um, once I make some more plates. I mean, I technically, I guess I could pop into a test world. But I've actually never, I tend to just enchant with books if I have that available. So I've never actually tried, because back when Astro Sorcery first came out, I remember everybody was saying, and I don't guess I ever thought to double check it, but that stacking, you know, three of the same made it stronger, but I might, I might actually be wrong on that. We may just come out to be full strength all the time. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not for sure, so don't quote me on it. But I know that you can get, like, secondary effects, because I've gotten those before um, when enchanting. So, like, for example, let's say you, you go to put protection on a book, or um, you go to put protection on a chess piece or something like that. It can come out with Phoenix Fire um, being the one that I got in the past. Um, like, little added things like that. You can actually get Phoenix Fire as an enchantment. So, I do know that that's... That's actual, but I've never actually, I don't guess I've ever tried sticking a bunch of them on there. So, if you've done it, or if you're familiar with that, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to pop into a test world and mess around with it. And see. But, anyways, anyways, I'm going to end the episode out here. Um, I'll let you guys know what I find out and everything. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. To stay updated with when new videos come out. Also, one thing I want to mention that I actually forgot to mention earlier, I think. Um, I was meaning to after I went over the chalices and then I think it slipped my mind. Um, once I get... I, I've got to craft up a few chalices, some more chalices. Um, but if you put chalices around your Starlight Infuser... Um, Placement doesn't really matter, just as long as they're within range. I tend to put them on these four blocks here, but I think you could put them on these blocks too. I think that'd be fine. But you can place chalices around this and fill those up with starlight, liquid starlight, and then it won't absorb the starlight that's in uh, the floor here. It will absorb starlight from the chalices, but it's a little bit more efficient on starlight doing it that way, doing the infusion, especially when it's eating through starlight every single craft, it seems like, just about. So we can do that. Man, this speed is nice. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.